The Non-Duality of Eckhart Tolle Eckhart Tolle is a renowned spiritual teacher and author known for his profound insights into the nature of consciousness and the human experience. In his teachings and writings, he beautifully encapsulates the ideas of non-dual philosophy, which emphasize the fundamental unity and interconnectedness of all things. Eckhart was born on February 16, 1948, in Lunen, a small town in Germany. His birth name was Ulrich Leonard Toll. His surname can be pronounced the German way, as in Toll, or more commonly pronounced as Tolle. He doesn't mind either pronunciation. Not much is publicly known about his early life, as Eckhart himself has not extensively shared specific details. During his childhood and teenage years, Eckhart experienced feelings of deep unhappiness and depression, which led him on a personal quest for spiritual understanding and inner transformation. He was intellectually curious and explored various philosophies, religions, and spiritual teachings in his search for the existential questions that troubled him. In 1961 he moved to Spain to live with his father, where he refused all forms of formal education between the ages of 13 and 22, preferring instead to pursue his own creative and philosophical interests. In his early 20s, he moved to England to pursue his studies at the University of London. While there, he earned a degree in English literature and philosophy. It was during this time, in 1977 at the age of 29, that Eckhart experienced a pivotal moment in his life that marked his spiritual awakening. Often referred to as his Enlightenment experience. During this time, he was in a state of deep depression and was contemplating suicide. Suddenly, he had a profound realization that completely transformed his perception of reality. In that transformative moment, he experienced a radical shift in consciousness. He describes it as a complete dissolution of his sense of self and a deep sense of inner peace and presence. Eckhart's mind became quiet, and he experienced a profound connection with the underlying intelligence and unity of all things. For a period of about two years after this he spent much of his time sitting on park benches. In a state of deep bliss, watching the world go by. His family thought him irresponsible, even insane. He changed his first name from Ulrich to Eckhart, in homage to the German philosopher and mystic, Meister Eckhart. Following this awakening, he spent several years integrating his experience and deepening his understanding of spirituality and consciousness. He did not align himself with any specific religious or spiritual tradition, but drew wisdom from a wide range of sources, including Buddhism, Zen Buddhism, Hinduism, Advaita Vedanta, Taoism, Christianity, and various mystical teachings. These had a profound influence on his later work. In 1995, after visiting the west coast of North America several times, Eckhart settled in Vancouver, British Columbia. There he met his future wife, Kim Eng. Over time Eckhart gained recognition and a devoted following, and his first book, The Power of Now, A Guide to Spiritual Enlightenment was published in 1997. The book became a bestseller and catapulted him to international acclaim. Much of his early success can be attributed to Oprah Winfrey. She played a pivotal role in elevating Eckhart's career and bringing his teachings to a broader audience. As well as The Power of Now, Eckhart has written several influential books, including children's books, 
that have resonated with readers worldwide. Some of his books and interviews have been released as audiobooks. Here are a number of quotes from Eckhart that illustrate how his ideas express non-dual concepts. On the present moment, People don't realize that now is all there ever is, there is no past or future except as memory or anticipation in your mind. And this quote. Your entire life only happens in this moment. The present moment is life itself. Yet. People live as if the opposite were true and treat the present moment as a stepping stone to the next moment, a means to an end. On our true nature. At the heart of the new consciousness lies the transcendence of thought, the newfound ability of rising above thought, of realizing a dimension within yourself that is infinitely more vast than thought. And this quote, You are not, in the universe, you, are the universe, an intrinsic part of it. Ultimately you are not a person, but a focal point where the universe is becoming conscious of itself. What an amazing miracle. On the illusory nature of the ego. All the misery on the planet arises, due to a personalized sense of me or us. That covers up the essence of who you are. When you are unaware of that inner essence, in the end you always create misery. It's as simple as that. And this quote. Since the ego is a derived sense of self, it needs to identify with external things. None of these, is you. On pain and sorrow. The greater part of human pain is unnecessary. It is self-created as long as the unobserved mind runs your life. On the pain body, another expression for the ego. The pain body, which is the dark shadow cast by the ego, is actually afraid of the light of your consciousness. It is afraid of being found out. Its survival depends on your unconscious identification with it, as well as on your unconscious fear of facing the pain that lives in you. But if you don't face it, if you don't bring the light of your consciousness into the pain, you will be forced to relive it again and again. On awakening. It is to see clearly that what I perceive, experience, think, or feel, is ultimately not who I am, that I cannot find myself in all of those things that continuously pass away. What remains is the light of consciousness, in which perceptions, experiences, thoughts, and feelings come and go. That is being, that is the deeper, true I. On death. What a caterpillar calls the end of the world, we call a butterfly. And this quote. In the face of death, especially violent death, things don't make sense anymore. So death is the dissolution of either physical form or psychological form. And when a form dissolves, always something shines through, that had been obscured by the form. This is the formless one life, the formless one consciousness. To summarize, Eckhart Tolle's teachings and writings beautifully encapsulate the ideas of non-dual philosophy. 
His teachings align closely with non-dual principles and offer practical guidance for individuals seeking to awaken to their true nature. He provides easy access to a number of concepts that have been steeped in ancient traditions and cultures. His simple explanations of difficult concepts have enabled people to avoid much suffering and find an easy pathway to peace, joy, and happiness in their lives. Thanks for watching.